ask ourselves what the future is going to look like, that doesn't spark much hope for our generation today, unfortunately. But the people of the past were very fascinated by what our day would look like. And that's called retrofuturism, that's today's video's topic. And it is the fascination of the people of the past about the future. So how they imagined our day today would look like and what we would have as a society. So today we are delving deep into retrofuturism and its effects on art, fashion and popular culture. So our journey starts in the 20th century Italy with Italian futurism. It starts with people who pioneered it such as Tommaso Filippo Marinetti and uh, it was a movement that celebrated speed, machines and the future. It was the era of industrialization and people were very interested in this topic. This moment actually laid the foundation for later expressions of futurism that would follow. This moment, however, stands separate from the fascist ideologies it became associated with and we are looking at it in a historical context and it's influence on later uh, expressions of retrofuturism. But even before Italian futurism, visionaries like H.G. Wells and Jules Verne ignited imaginations with their tales of futuristic worlds and extraordinary adventures. Their literary works, brimming with imagination and anticipation of the future, laid the early foundations of retrofuturism. One of the earliest representations of retrofuturism emerged in the early 1900s with the movie by Georges Méliès called Voyage à la Lune, which is a trip to the moon, and it depicted some astronomers going to the moon in a bullet-shaped spaceship and encountering surreal and fantastical landscapes. Even literature and magazines try to imagine what the future looked like. For example, the science and invention attempt to predict the future of inventions and further fueled our fascination with the unknown. But the decade that comes to mind the first when we think of retrofuturism is the swinging 60s. It was a decade of rebellion, space exploration and increasingly innovative technology and fashion. The space exploration or space race sparked vivid imaginations about what the future might be like. This led to new art styles depicting the imagined future. The retrofuturistic designs of Art Deco, Streamline Modern, and Populux or Googie architectural styles fused together to create what we now know as Reagan Gothic, which is a visual style leaning heavily on eye-jarring colors, geometric shapes, sweeping curves, and shiny metal and glass. Genres of retrofuturism today include cyberpunk, steampunk, dieselpunk, atompunk, and Reagan Gothic, each referring to a technology of a specific time period. The 1960s was the first time that fashion started to actually cater to teenagers who after the war had much more money to spend on clothes. With the advances made in communications, their desires were constantly fed through fashion magazines, radios and TV. It was a time for youthful rebellion and innovative fashion designs. Retrofuturist fashion was absolutely everywhere and the cultural obsession with the space race to the moon was resonating in the fashion world. Designers like Pierre Cardin, André Courrèges and Paco Rabanne led the charge and created iconic space age inspired collection. Bright whites, lycra, vinyl and shorter skirts ushered in a new era of style. Pierre Cardin's 1964 Cosmocorps collection started this trend and the futuristic imaginings he conjured in form of fashion items included LED lit dresses, sculptural garments, go-go boots, space helmet inspired headpieces, Cosmocorp suits and much more. He used unusual materials such as plastic, vinyl, PVC and acrylic. Every dress is an adventure in ideas, he told Vogue in 1964. His ideas were just as avant-garde as his creations. Originating from Italy, he escaped fascism there and came to France and changed his name Pietro to Pierre. He was an early pioneer of diversity on the catwalk with his Japanese muse Hiroko Matsumoto taking starring roles in his shows as well as brown-skinned models just like him um, who were an unusual sight in the early 60s. He also prepared the first ever men's catwalk show and his avant-garde creations were an early exploration of androgynous and unisex clothing. Cardin's bold color and aeronautically inspired silhouette reflected the utopian technocentric vision embraced by the culture at large. In fact, NASA even asked Cardin to design some spacesuits for its astronauts. Thus, 
Cardin became the first ever civilian to ever wear a NASA spacesuit. Cult classics like the Jetsons even mentioned Pierre Cardin's fashion in their cartoons. Star Trek was also heavily inspired by Cardin's fashion and his bright, Paul Utilitarian Cosmocops collection of 1964 was an obvious inspiration for the costume design in the Star Trek shows. Courage's Space Age inspired collection that was also introduced in 1964 featured outfits with cutout midriffs and bags that were worn without a bra. These were matched with flat boots, goggles and helmets and their shape and style were inspired by the equipment worn by astronauts. The look was geometric and used bright colors while his use of materials such as plastic pushed the fashion envelope. Paco Rabanne, the Spanish designer whose name is most associated with perfume nowadays, was originally a jewelry designer before he tried his hand at clothing. He soon became known for his eclectic fashions and his clothing was equally as decorative as his early creations. He started his own fashion house in 1966 and combined materials such as paper and metal with vibrant colors in his flamboyant designs. Raban reveled in his reputation as the enfant terrible of the 60s French fashion world. He even made it to Hollywood designing costumes for Jane Fonda's Barbarella. Personally, I sat through the torture that was the movie Barbarella just for the sake of fashion inspiration and I did get a lot of fashion inspiration, but I hated the movie. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, let me know in the comments if you did what you thought about it. Françoise Hardy was also a big fan of his designs. His chainmail dresses and bold designs were iconic in the fashion world. Space Age fashion also found its way into pop culture, appearing in cult classics like William Klein's 1966 film Qui êtes-vous, Polymagou? <laughs> Director Brad Bird described his 2004 Pixar film The Incredibles as looking like what we thought the future would turn out like in the 1960s. Disappointing. The spirit of retrofuturism extended beyond the 1960s and continued into the 1980s, but this era saw a transformation of the relatively innocent vision of space age that was pioneered by the likes of Pierre Cardin and André Courage. Because this era saw the emergence of bold, space-themed and alien-like collections, with designers like Thierry Mugler and Claude Montana taking the lead. However, the most significant transformation emerged in the mid-1990s as the new millennium approached and brought with it a sense of impending anxiety about emerging technologies. Fashion was redefined with dystopian visions of the future, dominated by hackers and cyberpunks and the like. As the World Wide Web gained prominence in the late 90s, fashion seamlessly adapted itself to this technological change. Films like Hackers, Strange Days and The Matrix played a pivotal role in influencing the futuristic fashion of the 90s. Cyber-inspired costumes crafted from materials like patent leather and metallics characterized by sleek and edgy silhouettes appeared. The 90s also saw the rise of Hacker Chic, which is a fashion trend born out of tech paranoia and a spirit of rebellion involving machinery. Drawing inspiration from the 19th century steampunk aesthetics, this subgenre of retrofuturism fused elements of the past with a vision of the future. Fast forward to the 2020s, we are witnessing a lot of nostalgia and a revival of Y2K trends, especially when it comes to technology, such as flip phones and T9 style text graphics. The 2020s are also about exploring how fashion can be transformed through technology, not just in the real world, but also in the digital one, online one as well. The rise of fashion NFTs has gained substantial popularity following COVID, which is basically a certificate of you owning some sort of digital fashion item, maybe in a video game or in the online world. In March 2022, first ever Metaverse Fashion Week hosted by the Central Land took place and this shifted the runway into the digital sphere. Prominent brands like Dolce & Gabbana, Elisab and Etro introduced their cyber collections. While the event received mixed reviews, many fashion tech innovators believe that it is the just the beginning of the future of a new era in fashion. Fashion houses are not only exploring wearable technology, but also embracing technological advances in fabric, such as the use of more sustainable fabrics and ethical leather replacements, such as vegan leather, which can also be exemplified by Gucci's iconic 1955 horse pitch shoe, which was recently released in a vegan leather version with the face of the campaign Billie Eilish. And of course, as a vegan, as much as I cannot afford this bag, I'm all here for it. 
Moreover, in the 2020s, there is an ever-growing importance placed on sustainable and ethical fashion practices and retrofuturism in the 2020s reflects the ever-changing cultural landscape and technological advancement of our time. Honestly, this whole metaverse fashion week thing doesn't really seem interesting to me as it is currently because it's not as developed as maybe it will be one day in the future, so we'll have to wait and see. And making this video took a lot of research and during this research I honestly found inspiration in something that was never so much of an interest for me. I've always been interesting in, interested in vintage styles but now I'm also inspired by futuristic designs and I want to go and sew myself some like alien and space inspired costumes just for fun and I hope that this video also inspired you. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this whole thing. Would you join the Metaverse Fashion Week? Did you ever hear of it before because I had never heard of it before researching for this video and are you interested in this whole aesthetic would you see yourself wearing it or at least appreciating it and um, I hope that you enjoyed this video if you did remember to give it a like and if you haven't subscribed already subscribe to my channel and click the bell button to hear notifications every time I upload thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye